Hi everybody! It's New Year's Eve and it's time to say thank you again. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon of course and thank you to the whole community for having fun with my plugins and giving me all that feedback, the comments on the YouTube videos. And a special thank you today, and that will be a surprise for him, goes out to Will. Will, thank you for testing the plugins for compatibility issues and installation routines. And of course, I will not end this year without a new plugin, but we'll come to that soon. So let's first see what we had this year. There were four synthesizers and it started with the WTFM synthesizer, so the wavetable synthesizer. The frequency modulation synthesizer. And then I added another synthesizer to that plugin, and this was the analog synthesizer. And not to forget the last synthesizer, the additive synthesizer called Spectrum. And I made MIDI plugins this year too, and there we had the sequence player. Which could also trigger drums. And of course, the arpeggiator. And of course, we wouldn't be complete without the mixing plugins. And the first mixing plugin this year was the Degrader Series 2. And I'll play stuff while Bobby sang the blues. The next one was the Chorus plugin. <laughs> And then, of course, we saw the silver compressor. Oh, the weather outside is frightful. And the yellow black compressor. Rudolph, with you, no surprise. Won't you guide my sleigh tonight? So now let's count. We saw four synthesizers and two MIDI plugins the degrader, the chorus, the silver compressor, the yellow black compressor. These are 10 plugins or modules, how you want to call that. And we'll see one today. And this is another mixing plugin. And I think that this is a really cool plugin and a really cool finish for this year. So now let's see the Tukan Studios Saturation Series 2. So now here it is, your saturation plugin or preamp simulation. But to be honest, I really hesitate calling this a preamp because a preamp is a thing that happens before your converter. So this thing will not magically make appear things that you didn't capture. But of course, it can have a big influence on your sound. So to give it another name, it's a saturation plugin with advanced features. And these features can, of course, help you improving your recordings. And for demonstration, I recorded a little guitar part. And I recorded that with two different microphones. They're both condenser microphones, but they sound quite different. So now let's start in bypass mode and hear the brighter microphone. And now let's see what we have here. Of course, we have the bypass knob. So to use the plugin, we of course need it activated. And now let's start from left to right. In this field here on the left, let's make the plugin bigger. It's a series two plugin, they can be scaled. Here we see the filters. So we have a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So this filters out low frequencies and this filters out high frequencies. And then we see a bunch of buttons here. And these adjust the slope for the filter. So this would be 18 decibels per octave or 12 decibels per octave. And we have these for the high pass filter and for the low pass filter individually. So let's hear it, do it drastic, 24, and here the high pass filter. Now let's hear the low pass filter. Wow, 
Well, that's basic. I think you know what they do. Let's get on to the more interesting section. And this is the saturation stage. And here we have, of course, the big gain knob, which of course means more gain is more saturation. And the saturation is indicated with this magic eye, which we see here. Let's see that. And what it tells you is, if you don't see it moving, you certainly have a bit of saturation there, but not really much. And when you see it moving, you have saturation. And when the two ends reach in the middle, you definitely cross the line from saturation to distortion. And there's a little, well, you can call it hidden feature. Actually, I didn't mean to make it a feature, but it's great for showing you what it does. And this can be activated by holding the Alt key on the keyboard and clicking the gain knob. And here you see your saturation curve. So the more saturation I turn in, the more deformed the curve will be. Now let's hear again the guitar. And let's keep that for a while because it's great for showing things. The next knob would be the distortion knob. So here you can add more distortion to the signal. And you can already hear that we have a lot of distortion now. So let's go back a bit. And now we have distortion, which is only on the even harmonics. And you can mix in the odd harmonics here. And this gives a bit of nastier sound. I think you could already hear this graininess in the sound. And before we come to the knob that is labeled style, let's see this keep level thing here, which is my attempt for an auto gain thing. And actually, I don't really believe that there are things like auto gain that actually really work with all kinds of signals because we are modifying the signal and we would have to measure how much we modify that signal and all that speech. But I think it works and keeps your level in a way. So now it's off and we can see how the knobs interact. And that's more the way an analog unit would work, of course. So, okay, now let's reset them and let's see this style knob. And when you hear people talking about preamps, some say they like a certain preamp because it makes a smooth sound. So let's turn the style to smooth. And others say that their favorite preamp really brings out the details. So let's turn that to crisp. And you can especially hear that on the transients of the guitar. Let's hear that again. The next knob that we see here is a clipper. And this is simply a hard clipper and it indicates clipping with these lights for the left channel and for the right channel. But now we have a mono recording, so both channels will do the same thing. And now here we have something more interesting, and these are the fixed filters. So I built in some filters here, and I gave them nice names. So we have the air boost, the deharsh, the demod, and extend lows. And for that, I switched to the other microphone. So let's hear it. And compared to the first microphone, this might sound a bit dull. So let's play them. First the bright microphone, then the dull microphone. And 
now for the dull microphone, I would like to use the air boost and maybe the demut filter to clean it up a bit. Again without the filters. And I think that really helped. Maybe let's extend the lows a bit so we get a fuller sound. And now let's switch to the brighter microphone. Well, that now sounds a bit thin and sizzly, so I would remove the demod filter and I would remove the sizzle and I would even use the de harsh maybe. Well, best to play around with the filters yourself. These are meant for quick fixes and helping you improving the sound a bit, but maybe you want to use an equalizer instead. Now, the output stage is simply an output knob for the gain staging. And here we have a magic eye again, which tells us the output level. And as soon as the lines cross in the middle, you'll be over zero dBFS. Okay, reset that again and see the last stage, and this is the oversampling stage. And well, oversampling is a topic itself, but let me try a brief explanation. And for that, we turn it off. And now here I have a tone generator and a spectrum analyzer. And I worry, I muted the signal, so we don't have to hear this annoying test tone all the time. So well, here's our test tone. And as we start saturating it, it produces overtones, as you can see. Test tone overtone, another overtone. Let's see the odd harmonics. Let's see some more distortion here. And now you could think everything's fine, but with more distortion or with a higher test tone, you see that we have frequency content here and here and here and here, which shouldn't be there. Let's make this more obvious. So you see, we would expect this peak and this and this and this and this, but not the other ones. And these are all aliases, which are mirrored back on the highest frequency. And for this anti-aliasing, we need oversampling. And this simply means, if I turn this to two times oversampling, now the plugin internally runs at double the sample rate. So it will mirror back on a much later point and we can filter out the unwanted content. But of course, this costs some CPU because everything has to be calculated twice. And the higher the oversampling, the less alias frequencies should be in your spectrum. And there's one more thing about oversampling. If you have more than one plugin in your plugin chain on the channel that needs oversampling, best turn off the oversampling in all your plugins and instead right click and use the chain oversampling. This helps you getting a better sound because the alias frequencies are only filtered once at the end of the chain. So you don't have a filter and a filter and a filter. You only have one filter that makes a cleaner audio. So now we have the guitar and I added a bit of reverb to make it sound very professional. Hey, now let's see the plugin on the vocal track and we hear it in bypass mode on the vocal track. Slip inside the eye of your mind. Don't you know you might find better place to play You said that you'd never be But all the place that you see Will slowly fade away What we heard was the brighter mic, so let's switch that now Slip inside the eye of your mind Don't you know you might find A better place to play that you'd never be But all the place that you see Will slowly fade away So well, now, that's it for this year. I hope you have fun with the new plugin. I hope you have fun with all the other plugins. See you next year and bye-bye.